will be bringing you all the action from Rod Laver Arena, all of the colour, all of the excitement of day one of Australian Open 2022. Melbourne is my home, and the first slam of the year is in my backyard. I got the home court advantage. We are so happy to be back. It's always an honour to play on the courts where these legends made their names. Osaka is champion in Australia for the second time. Naomi's back, and the first slam of the year is always fresh with hope. Medvedev goes mainline with a backhand. She's like a magician with a wand. <laughs> Will there be a new name on the trophy? My first title was 2015. I didn't want to be a role model. I just wanted to be me. It's a magnificent seven for the champ. A true champion is not who wins the most tournaments. Rafa! It's about your purpose. It's AO 2022, and we are ready to roll. And I feel like there's a few guys who've separated themselves. There's room for someone else to break through and maybe hopefully disrupt the pecking order a bit. There's those guys who are sort of seen as the next ones, Medvedev, who just got his first Grand Slam. I, I do like Medvedev. Well, I picked uh, Daniil Medvedev from the beginning. He's playing such good tennis. I think he's got his confidence way, way high after winning the US Open. I think he really believes he can beat anybody on a hard court. To sit to pass, obviously, is definitely a possibility as well. He's had some tremendous results here in Australia. He has a great contingent of fans. He's done a phenomenal job of competing his way through the matches that he's won. Guy's got a heart of a lion. Nadal has looked pretty good tennis-wise. He's chasing number 21 in his second Australian Open. There's a lot of history on the line for Rafa, so uh, my eyes are firmly on him. Because of the passion, the joy for competing at that level. He's gonna be a huge crowd favorite here. He's gonna be an incredibly intimidating presence across the net like no one else really in this draw is. If things go his way, he has a real chance. Berrettini's, he's one of the guys that we're gonna keep looking at. I mean, he's already been in two Grand Slam finals. He's, he's probably gonna get one under his belt at some point. If there's somebody that could rock the boat, it's definitely uh, Matteo, only because his game is really suited on this court. The ball is bouncing super high and, and the conditions are fast and they're really hot. When you have that serve and that forehand, pretty hard to deal with when you're his size. Zverev is going to be a contender for the slams that he's playing. I think uh, Zverev is ready to, to win a major. He just appears to have uh, really matured and his game, is he's got all the tools. So I just think he's in the right place, and I've always thought he'd be a Grand Slam champion. So yeah, I mean, it's getting a little bit deeper, and I love that about the men's game, because the women's game, obviously, you can throw 10 balls in the air and grab one and be like, yep, that person definitely could win a Grand Slam. When the draw came out immediately, I looked to that section with Ash Barty and Naomi Osaka. That was, you know, one of the toughest, and they could potentially meet in the round of 16, so that would be incredibly exciting. Yeah, there are definitely a lot of par parallels between Naomi and Ash Barty in that they take control of their own careers and they feel like things are spinning out a bit. To step back, con be concerned about their mental health and, and wellness, and, and take time away from tour in order to regain perspective and readiness. It's really interesting seeing Naomi ready to come back for the first week of the year and play in Melbourne there because we weren't sure at the US Open where she said that she was going to take an indefinite break from the sport because she just wasn't enjoying it, didn't feel like she was in the right headspace. We weren't sure how long she'd be gone, if it would be months, you know, a year, we, we didn't know. Every player at different times in their careers have to, you know, make decisions, you know, make allowances for where they are mentally, emotionally, and you know, the best players that are most effective do a better job of that. And, and so I think for Naomi Osaka, you know, this was one of those times for her. And I was really impressed with the fact that she was okay with taking that kind of time off. She seems to, you know, have a, a slightly different outlook at this start of the year. She seems happy on court. So some rust perhaps from the defending champion, but plenty of good stuff there for her and her fans to believe that she can go a lot, lot further in this event. Ash Barty literally taking a year and a half off, you know, almost retiring for lack of a better word. That was a hugely brave move. And she's certainly an example that a lot of players can look to. Players like, you know, Raducanu, like Fernandez, Coco Goff, uh, Sophia Kennan, who's, you know, gone through some personal struggles off court. We see the 2020 champion leave the arena. 
It's much easier to be an unknown with no expectations than someone who comes in having to sort of back up or, or justify your previous results. And we saw Fernandez go out to Madison Inglis in her first match here. The 23rd seed US Open finalist, her Australian Open has ended before it really started. Yeah, with golf, it's interesting because she's been around on tour for what feels like a long time, relatively. She's still the youngest player in the top 200 at, at 17, and she's still going into Grand Slams as a top 20 seed. That should be respected and appreciated for what she's done, rather than sort of saying, well, she hasn't continued to, you know, do bigger and better things and keep one-upping herself. She's often the talk of the town, and that's disappointing for the young American Coco Goff. When you're that young and you're literally growing up in a sport, you know, through all the transitions that occur, you know, in any teenager moving into young adulthood, moving into just knowing who they are and, and what they stand for, it's tough to always be in the public eye. Radu Kanu also uh, will face that kind of pressure. Uh, when you post a big result that's career changing and changes perceptions of you, you get a target on your back and you feel the weight of those expectations. The US Open champion is gone, and Kovinic gets the win of her career. Ms. Raducanu leaves, major disappointment for her. Hopefully people are patient and understanding that their success as teenagers was way ahead of schedule, and a uh, setback at the Australian Open is just very temporary. Big personalities are making their mark on court, and the fans are loving it. When is there not a boisterous crowd when Nick is involved? Kia Arena is rocking! And this is the sort of atmosphere the AO is known for. Definitely br brings out fan bases that we don't see in tennis. Oh, we're here to see Kyrgios play. Uh, we're here to watch Kyrgios. King, King, King Kyrgios. Kyrgios. Let's bring in the energy, let's win it! Go, Nick! I understand that it's a gentleman's game, but it's about time that people embraced some sort of different energy in the sport. Him in doubles with Fanasi, I mean, it's a great show. The Kokodon gets it, Kyrgios show rolls on! Well, I want to take this crowd with them to the semi-finals. They create a lot of excitement and people love watching them play. You know, Kyrgios in Australia at the Australian Open is an experience. You know, I'm curious, I've kind of been on a personal journey <laughs> as, a, as a journalist. Nick can do that to you, I think. When I first saw him play early on, I think it was just glaringly apparent to somebody like me. If he could put it all together, would win multiple slams and have a chance to really uh, make a huge mark on the game. Medvedev Kyrgios. Fingers crossed that it's a blockbuster. I feel as good as I can feel at the moment. I've done everything right. I'll keep controlling everything I can control and we'll see how it goes. It's not the first time I'm playing the home favorite, so I knew that uh, everybody's gonna try to cheer him up. Yeah, I've played him twice, I've beaten him twice. The big question is, what does this guy have in store for us this evening? Oh, yes! Straight Nitro from Kyrgios! He played a really great game on my serve to break me. Crowd went, uh, went for him. You need to use all your chances and he managed to use it. This is the first point. Watch the reflexes here. Some of the best footwork that we've seen from Nick. It was obviously a lot rowdier than it usually is on Rod Laver. I'm happy about myself even in the third set because I managed you know, to keep my serve afterwards, make him serve for the set. I try to do it throughout the whole game. Just keep my level, stay really steady and trying to find this momentum where he's going to break a little bit. Oh, he means business, Medvedev here. I think no matter what the score is or how much pressure he's under, he never gets flustered. To be honest, I threw everything I could at him. He managed to close it out in four sets, which was uh, definitely not easy. Okay. Set match, Medvedev. <laughs> Daniel Medvedev <laughs> takes care of Nick Kyrgios. And a fantastic contest on Rod Laver Arena. I'm going to hold my head high. You know, I gave it everything. I put on a good performance, and I think he's going to be favourite to win the Australian Open. You know, I can't be too upset. I'm not going to judge him and what he should be or what his potential is. I think he has to figure out what he really wants to do. And if that's what it is to be a showman and wind up the crowd and then go out before the quarterfinals, that's his destiny. That's the way he sees it. I'm okay with that now. 
it's really hard for me to pick out um, dark horses when I feel like anybody that's left in the round of 16 has a shot. Barbara Krejcikova, who's coming in here uh, as the number four seed, I think is really underrated. Not a traditional dark horse because of her, her very low number next to her name in the draw, backing up that really surprising French Open win with a, a solid game that has her in contention for the number one ranking, actually, if things go her way here. Danielle Collins, the way she's battled against some of the top players, we know that she can play well on these courts. Of course, she's gotten to a semifinal here before, so I think it all suits her because she's such a fit, intense competitor. Ishiontek is that player that just wants it so badly. Having already won a Grand Slam, the expectation is, of course, you're going to win another one, right? Azarenka loves Australia. Won here twice. Is a fantastic hardcore player when she's right. And I think she's probably figured out uh, over the last year or so how to juggle, you know, being a mother and, and managing her career a little bit better. Maybe things have settled there some, but for sure she's dangerous. Madison Keys has had a couple of down years, but you can see the talent. She's had top five talent for a long, long time. On the men's side, I would love a surprise. It'd be great to see someone just seize the moment, and it could be someone who's you know a bit younger, like a Shapovalov or a, a Yannick Sinner. Kayla Fritz, who I think has made a step back up again um, this season. Felix is very professional in what he does. I mean, he's one of the most phenomenal athletes that we have in the sport. He's been tapped for quite a while as being one of the future stars. Carlos Alcaraz, 18-year-old Spaniard whose box office, he's got a lot of game and an all-court sort of player who could be a kind of an interesting combination of Federer, Djokovic, and Nadal if he were to break through. Carlos Alcaraz, the new kid on the block. He's going to have to get past a formidable opponent in Matteo Berrettini. Most important tournaments for me are the slams. I guess the next step is to, is to win the tournament. Yeah, if you don't have your popcorn ready, get it out. This is going to be spectacular. Stunning, absolutely stunning from Alcaraz. I think I have the level to play against the top players. I'm getting close. All of a sudden, I found myself in, in the fifth, and I said, okay, now I'm going to fight every point. Oh, no. Well, let's just hope that Berrettini is okay here. It was a heavy fall. I, I felt that it was uh, twisted, but it didn't, it didn't crack, and then I had the match point. And it's Matteo Berrettini who's the boss in the battle of the forehands. I'm feeling that I'm playing good against the best guys on tour and yeah, a lot of confidence from that. The contenders are emerging. The fallen pack their bags and hit the road. Hello and welcome to the Margaret Court Arena where we have a mouth-watering match-up between Alexander Zverev taking on the explosive Denis Shapovalov. I understand a few things more now than I used to. Um, I understand that you have to go through struggles sometimes to get to where you want to go. Zverev, for me, I think he's probably my favourite to win this tournament. I came here with a goal to, to, to win and, you know, maybe to become world number one and all that. But if I play like that, I don't deserve it. Shapovalov shines in Melbourne. I give credit to Dennis, but I gotta look at myself as well. And um, today we just, yeah, today was just, in my opinion, awful. And uh, and it's Samova of the USA up against Naomi Osaka, the defending champion, of course. I think it's going to be a, a really good match. I think, um, you know, obviously Osaka, I think, is favored in a lot of people's minds. I think she's really inspiring. Um, what she's done in the last couple of years is amazing. Just how authentic she is. It would be nice to win the tournament, but that's, like, really special. Oh, we have a match on our hands here. Anna Samova, she's in full flight. Anna Samova, the 20-year-old, delivers on the big stage. The defending champ is out. I fought for every point. I'm not God. I can't win every match, you know? Week one flew by. And now it's quarterfinal time. And Madison marches on in Melbourne. Game set. Her resurgence continues. 
Just so happy to be back in the semifinals here for the first time in a long time. Ashley Barty, she's been in top gear all week, and tonight she went into overdrive. Truly a masterclass. To go out there and play a semifinal at home, um, couldn't, couldn't be more pumped. Danielle Collins is through into the semi-finals of the Australian Open. Hopefully I can carry the confidence that I've gained over the last couple of years and, and be able to use that to my advantage. What a way to make a way through to the semi-finals. These are the stages of a tournament I can actually reach. Yeah, I feel like I'm in a good place. <laughs> It's seventh heaven for Rafa in Melbourne, a seventh semi-final. Being in semi-finals means a lot to me. It's an amazing news now, I am super happy. Berrettini becomes the first Italian man in history to reach the Australian Open semi-finals. I like to think that I'm riding a little bit uh, Italian tennis history. Stefano sets a pass is the very essence of tennis excellence right now. It was a great performance from start to finish with uh, no doubt and uh, clear game plan. Medvedev masters OJ Aliasim and the Russian is back in the last four. I'm feeling pretty confident. Uh, hopefully I can recover well and be ready for the semi. I thought Madison Keys, with how she had been playing, with how she had been serving, uh, could really push Barty. A matchup against Ash is obviously really difficult as a multiple Grand Slam champion. Just saying that alone is a lot to have to deal with. Two women with very different styles. Madison Keys, of course, so powerful, so aggressive. And Barty, she's more of the, the chess player, if you will. Oh, magnificent from Barty, got there so quickly. Barty controlled that match from the start, took what could have been a really challenging uh, contest and made it seem pretty routine. Match points. A virtuoso performance from the world number one. Barty through to her first Australian Open final. I obviously am disappointed with how it went tonight and obviously would have loved to have been in the finals here, but pretty happy with my summer in Australia. We're one step away. It's going to be an incredible experience come Saturday and one that I'm really, really looking forward to. Colin seeing how meekly Madison Keys lost her match, I think that inspired her. I mean, she was pumped from the start. I was prepared for her playing aggressive game, but I think that was the fastest ball I've ever played against on a match. This is awesome. This is unplayable stuff here at the moment for Daniel Collins. Piontek likes a little more time. Schwantek looks lost and understandably so. This is sledgehammer stuff here from Collins. I felt like I was really in the zone. There wasn't a lot getting in my way. In the end, she kind of took the racket out of Iga Schwantek's hands. Schwantek out here, out Thor, and out of here. Collins through to her first final at a major. It was relentless hitting from the back of the court. I'm not even feeling any regrets because I I did like the best I could today. To be through the final is is uh, really incredible. I think I'm at a loss for words right now. <laughs> I'm smiling on this match. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon and welcome to Rod Laver Arena. It is the first of the men's semi-finals matches. Rafa Nadal is incredible at competing. Well, he has given Berrettini no breathing room whatsoever. I pushed him, no, I, I make him play uncomfortable. I struggled at the beginning, I couldn't really find the uh... The rhythm. Berrettini finally got comfortable, figured out some ways to work around it, and really dug in and fought back to kind of steal the, the third set. Berrettini bags his first ever set against Nadal. And then the fourth set was a, a great battle, which Nadal again came out on top of. Rafael Nadal will contest a sixth Australian Open final, and he will have a crack at number 21. My happiness will not depend uh, on number of 21 or 20. 
I know that Australian Open is much more important than the rest of the numbers. Sitsipas and Medvedev have had an interesting rivalry. There's clearly no love lost between them. Two wonderful tennis players, two players that will be battling at this stage of majors for decades to come. Medvedev, he's solidly become sort of that, you know, top guy, number two, to continue to win slams. He's not going to take this match for granted. I know that I'm capable of winning seven matches in a row. He's one of the biggest fighters together with Nadal. Oh, he's made it. Our matches with, with Stefano Sara always emotional. Fitzipas got a coaching warning after Medvedev had been complaining about during the match. His father can talk every point. Repeat my answer, my question. Small cat. Players like to do this stuff to uh, throw you off mentally, and uh, it's for sure funny. <laughs> Medvedev ran away with the fourth set 6-1 and then closed it out with, in style. Casual as you like, Medvedev sets up the final of the Australian Open with Rafael Nadal. We don't fight uh, with the fists, but tennis is a fight. And uh, again, I'm really happy that I have the shot for the title on Sunday. Nobody makes a Grand Slam final by chance. Only the very best experience the sport's ultimate. Win, lose or draw, it's a celebration. It's gonna be fun. I'm going to enjoy the moment because I'm never going to get it again. Well, stunning from Sam Schroeder. He's dethroned the champ. Women's wheelchair singles champion, Dita de Groot. Feels very good, especially now I get to hold it. Amazing. I cannot uh, believe this result. It's a first Australian Open women's doubles title for Krejcikova and Siniakova. Absolutely outstanding, look what it means to them. From childhood friends to Grand Slam winners, can you believe it? It is the women's final for Ash Barty. She's already a great, but this is her home major and the one that she covets the most. The question is, how will Barty come out in terms of nerves? Her playing a final for her home slam, it's difficult to separate that from just playing the match itself. For Daniel Collins, it's been a unique journey, unprecedented. This type of match, it'll be in her wheelhouse. You know, the crowd is gonna be for Barty. I think Collins is gonna use that as kind of a chip on her shoulder. You know, it's not easy uh, going out and, and playing someone on home soil in the finals of a major, but this is what we live for in sports. All fortnight long, I've done a pretty good job of, of nullifying half chances from, from my opponents and being able to really um, serve well when I needed it most. Set points for Barty. A set from sporting immortality here in Australia. Ash Barty claims the opener, 6-3. In the second set, she was able to really get a run on and put me um, in places in the court where I didn't want to be. When she's on, when she's peaking, she is very tough to stop. And a third set looks like it's beckoning here. Once it was five on down, I just wanted to try and shift and be a little bit more aggressive. She started to push me back in the court a little bit more. It was incredible to be able to really, in a way, from five on down, turn, turn nothing into something and, and be able to get some real momentum. Is the 44-year wait over? Barty is the Australian Open champion. What amazing scenes. Physically, it, it wasn't my uh, best day, unfortunately, and that was something that I was dealing with in the whole tournament, so I look forward to playing her when I feel 100%. I have a little surprise. Put your hands together for Yvonne Gulagong Pauly. I thought she wasn't coming. It was really special just to be able to give her a hug and to be able to experience that together on such a big occasion, on such a beautiful court in a tournament that means so much to both of us. I think it was really nice to have her there just as a, someone to lean on when, when I wasn't really sure what to do. To have a Grand Slam title on, on each surface is, is pretty amazing and I never probably thought that it would ever happen to me. So very, very lucky and very humbled and privileged to be able to be a part of it.
I know I said a true champion is not who wins the most tournaments. I'm actually this guy. Just misses its target as Medvedev hones in on his, which is the opening set. Double break to the good, 5-2. Relentless from the Russian, 6-2. Opening set in this year's Australian Open men's final. Oh my goodness. That is a shocker from Rafa. That is truly majestic from Medvedev. What a way to finish the second set. And at two sets to love up. He looks like he's going to be a worthy winner here in Melbourne as well. That is a long way back for Rafa. Sport is unpredictable, you know, uh, and if you fight till the end, uh, I just wanted to, to give me a chance, and that's what I did. Uh, just fight, just keep uh, belief on, on, on trying to find a, a solution. Scintillating shot from the Spaniard. This crowd isn't just living every point, it's living every shot. Remarkable from Rafa. Medvedev leads by two sets to one. I lost a lot of times here. I just wanted to keep believing till the end. To a fifth we go. What a night, what a morning. Melbourne, you are amazing. Nadal will serve for the title for a second time. It's the miracle in Melbourne. 21 major titles from one of the greatest players of all time. I want to congratulate Rafa because what he did today, I was, uh, I was amazed. Like, you raised your level after two sets for the 21st Grand Slam. Yeah, it have been one of the most emotional matches on my tennis career. It's just amazing, you know, be being honest, uh, one month and a half ago, I didn't know if I will be able to be back on the tour playing tennis again. And today I am here in front of all of you having this trophy with me. And you really don't know how, how much I fight to be here. I can't thank enough all the support that I received since I arrived here. You are just amazing.